What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Top 5 Rundown. We've got an awesome episode for you this week, and with me for this awesome episode is my special guest, Lee from Drum Dums. Lee, say hello and talk about your channel. What's up, guys? Uh, this is Lee from Drum Dums. You can find me if you just type in Drum Dums uh, in your search box. Uh, but yeah, come on over to my channel. I have a lot of reviews, much like Cody himself, uh, and I try to change things up quite a bit. Like, I just recently did my VHS reviews. So that's something you can check out. Uh, but yeah, come on over, check out my channel, see what it's all about. Thanks, Cody. Yes, definitely. Go over and check out Drum Dumb's channel. Hit the subscribe button over there. The guy's got a lot of great videos, especially if you're a horror fan. There is tons of stuff to eat up over there because there is horror galore over at Drum Dumb's. And since Drum Dumb's is here with me today, obviously, we're talking about some horror, baby. We're going to be going over our top five horror sequels. Now normally, you know, top five horror movies is usually kind of the same conversation with most people. You always hear about Halloween, Exorcist, Nightmare on Elm Street. But when you talk about horror sequels, the conversation changes quite a bit. Would you agree? Oh, oh, definitely. Uh, I think what makes a good sequel is if you can add something to the original, but you also got to add something new. Uh, uh, you, and, and we're going to be talking about some great examples, of course. But um, I believe that, that a good sequel, Evil Dead 2 is a good example, that uh, it takes what was great before, but it really just uh, is its own thing. And, you know, that's what makes a good sequel. I 100% agree. But before we get into our top five, Lee, I'm sure you got some honorable mentions because I know I got a couple. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'll start out with my first one. It's going to be Scream 4. Nice. Um, and the reason Scream 4 is a, a great honorable mention is because... There was quite a gap between uh, Scream 3 and Scream 4, and Scream 3 was not a great movie uh, in the yeah. eyes of a lot of Scream fans. So to come back with Scream 4, uh, it still felt it felt fresh. It felt like it reignited the franchise, even though we never got a Scream 5. But um, Scream 4 tackled remakes, which was interesting, because Scream 2 uh, tackled sequels, Scream 3 tap, uh, tackled trilogies, and Scream 4, like I said, remakes. And I thought it was just really fun. The, the kills were I, I, were even bloodier than ever. Uh, yeah. Nev Campbell came back strong, uh, even stronger than ever, really. And yeah, at the end of the day, it's just a fun sequel. I like Scream 4. Yeah, I like Scream 4 a lot, too. You know, um, I didn't know what to expect exactly whenever I walked into the theater. I took my sister to go see that one. Um, like you said, Scream 3 kind of left a, a funny taste in everybody's mouth, so I don't think everybody knew what to expect, it was plus you know the amount of years it took between 3 and 4. But I liked 4. It was really inventive. You know, you said you were talking about remakes and reboots, which was really creative, and uh, a lot of really good kills. It's definitely gorier than a couple of the other ones. But the other aspect that I liked, too, and, you know, not, I'm not going to spoil who the killers were, but when the killers were revealed and their motivation was revealed, I liked how they kind of played on that whole new age thing of, you know, people kind of glorifying and celebra um, celebrating people who do crazy things in front of the camera or even stupid things like um, the fact that they wanted to get famous for doing this because of the culture that was going on those days it was it was really creative I like Scream 4 a lot yeah and what's really cool about uh, the Scream franchise in general is that it's it's a concept that you could continue because you could just talk about what's current in the landscape of horror uh, and that's what Scream did better than most franchises really yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, Scream 4 is awesome. It's actually, you know, behind Scream 2, it's my favorite one. My next one is going to be Bride of Chucky. Uh, yes. Another really good one because the third Chucky movie wasn't the best. You know, it kind of felt lukewarm. Mm -hmm. But then they come back with Bride of Chucky. Uh, but then they come back with Bride of Chucky. They, uh, they introduce this new character, Tiffany, who doesn't completely steal, you know, Chucky's thunder, but she is so fun. She's so interesting. Uh, and Jennifer Tilly was amazing. And also, this was more, you know, because they knew that Chucky was a funny character, but they never, like, fully went, went with it in the first couple movies. This one, they said, hey, let's take advantage of that comedy aspect. Uh, let's do kind of an Evil Dead 2 type Chucky movie, and let's just have a lot of fun with it. And I think Bride of Chucky knocks it out of the park. Seed of Chucky, different story. They took the comedy <laughs> way too far and they made it weird, but Bride of Chucky is excellent. Yeah, I love Bride of Chucky. Um, you know, what was awesome about that movie for me, uh, it came out, I think I was in like third grade when it came out, and so there was so much excitement for me because I'm finally getting to go see a Chucky movie in theaters because I grew up watching Chucky movies. And it was funny because when me and my dad actually got to the theater, we got there a little bit early, and we walked into the theater and the movie was still playing, and it was on that scene whenever Tiffany's taking the cookies out of the, um, the oven and that weird music's playing behind her. And me and my dad were like, oh God, this movie's gonna be kind of weird. <laughs> and then, um, you know, we walked back into the movie and we loved it, like start to finish. And that's, that's 
really, I think, both of our favorites of the entire franchise, really. And what was so great about it, not only was it the kills, but they really nailed the mix between the funny Chucky and the horror oh, Chucky. Definitely. And, the, you know, where C, like you said, took it way too far, Bride nailed it. And, you know, Tiffany was such a great addition, too, because now it's to the point where Tiffany is really synonymous with Chucky. Oh, definitely, definitely. And kind of a funny story, I have to go along with that, too. Um, about maybe a year ago, me and my girlfriend were going to um, the flea market here in Savannah, and there was this teller there, and she was selling a Chucky doll and a Tiffany doll, and she refused to sell them unless she sold them together. <laughs> and so, uh, like, I thought it was hilarious. I wasn't planning on buying them, but she's like, I am not separating them. They are sticking together forever. Yeah, it's great that uh, Jennifer Tilly, she embraces this franchise wholeheartedly. She's even going to be in Cult of Chucky. Uh, and I, I wish to God they, that they were releasing uh, Cult of Chucky in the theaters, but unfortunately yeah, they're not, I think. So, I, unfortunately, I've never seen a Chucky movie in the theater, but yeah. Yeah, I'll always remember going to see that movie in the theater. Um, well, I have three honorable mentions, and one of them, actually, I just got done talking with you about not too long ago, because you're the one that inspired me to watch it, and that's Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. Awesome. Now, for the longest time, I never gave this movie a chance, especially until I saw your review and you spoke so highly of it. Everybody always said that it was just such a weird tonal shift from the first movie, and it just, it's more of a horror comedy, and it's very goofy, but that's what I loved about it. When I actually sat down and watched it and gave it a chance, everything that was goofy and different and comedic about it was what made it so entertaining for me. Um, you know, it was this funny story behind it is that Toby Hooper actually intended the first movie to be received that way. He thought that he was making a horror comedy, and then when everybody was, you know, running out of the theater screaming and having nightmares and throwing up everywhere, he kind of figured maybe I, I didn't quite nail what I was looking for there. But, um, you know, he went off and he did Poltergeist, and he got his name up there a little bit more, and he got to come back and actually make the movie that he wanted to make with Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. And I loved it. You know, you got Dennis Hopper. Uh, I loved it the way that they utilized Leatherface in this and the, the, the Sawyer family. And then you have uh, Bill Mosley as Chop Top, which is one of the best parts. And it's just such a great movie. And there's a great jump scare in this, too, whenever Leatherface is first oh, yeah. shown in that little radio station. Um, that, that made me jump out of my seat. But, yeah, everything about this movie was just so much fun for me. And I, I'm glad I finally gave it a chance because it's a great sequel. Yeah, I actually avoided uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 until just recently, actually. It, just, it was one of those movies that when I looked at it, I was comparing it to the original, and I was like, "This just doesn't look interesting to me. I don't like what they're doing to this, this, you know, this whole franchise." And then I, you know, I constantly heard all this praise about it, so I finally said, "You know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to watch it." And the opposite happened. I loved the hell out of it. I got it. I saw what Toby Hooper was trying to do, and I, I did some research behind the scenes. And Toby Hooper, like you said, he always wanted to make this type of movie, and Canon Films was constantly begging him to get another sequel out, and he did it, and they didn't like it, but. It's grown into this huge cult classic. Chop Top is yeah. a horror icon, uh, which is a big feat for uh, a character that's introduced in a sequel. And oh, yeah. it, it made Bill Mosley a legend. Nomland! <laughs> 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 Yeah, he was a great character. Well, uh, my second honorable mention is part of a franchise that really took me a while to really warm up to it. Because when I first dove into it, it was something completely different than what I expected. Uh, that's the Evil Dead franchise, and my pick is Army of Darkness. Yes. I love Army of Darkness. You know, I understand like you know the world's kind of divided into two. You got people who prefer Evil Dead Two, people who prefer Army of Darkness. I just I've grown up with Army of Darkness. Right. And everything about it just is so much fun to me. They took it into a little bit more of a comedic element. You know, they put it in the medieval times. Um, Ash Williams has a lot more one-liners, a lot more jokes. He's a lot more animated in this one. But just from beginning to end, this movie is just pure entertainment. I love how they kind of took a, do a new spin from the tone and the feel of the first e two Evil Dead movies, and they took it in a different direction, which is what you were talking about with how great sequels are. Um, and I just loved everything about it. Like the, the practical effects are great, and it's just a movie that I always grew up watching. And really, when it boils down to it, just Army of Darkness to me is just a movie that's just an absolute blast to watch, start to finish. I'll always go back and watch that one. So I love Army of Darkness. Yeah, and it, it's it's almost like we're horror brothers, man. Because I was the same way with Evil Dead. I, I I didn't really get it for years and years. And I think Army of Darkness, if I remember correctly, might have been the first one I saw too. Uh, and one thing I loved about that was just Ash, and he was just, I mean, on steroids, more one-liners than the other two movies combined. And mm -hmm. still to this day, one of my favorite lines of all time of any movie is from Army of Darkness, where he says, right now you're in charge of two things, Jack and shit, and Jack just left town. <laughs> <laughs> love the hell out of that line. And there's just awesome. so many of them. 
Uh, yeah, Army of Darkness is, is a blast. I love the practical effects in it, too. I love the, the balls that uh, Sam Raimi had with, you know, giving us this movie that really, at the end of the day, is a straight-up comedy. Uh, but, you know, it. I think fans embraced it because they love that character, Ash, so much. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, you know, as much as I love the TV show that they have out now, Ash vs. Evil Dead, it's great. Um, I kind of I want to see somewhat of a follow-up of this Army of Darkness at oh, some I love point. That. You know, I'd love to see something go in that direction. But yeah, everything you said about it, completely agree. And another thing that's great about it, you know, I bought the Scream Factory release for this about three or four months ago. And me and my son watched it. I haven't seen it in years. And we just died laughing from start to finish. So, you know, it's, it's a great movie that just transcends generations. And it's always going to be loved for anybody that watches it, I think. Now, my third honorable mention and my final honorable mention is a movie that I just have to show some love to because... I've always loved this movie. I actually prefer it to the original, and it gets hated on so much, and I never understand why, and that's 28 Weeks Later. Hell yes. Yes. Uh, 28 Weeks Later is just such an awesome sequel. Like, 28 Days Later, taking nothing away from it. It's a great movie. It's very artistic, and it really kind of jump-started zombies again in that generation when that movie came out. You know, they had all the different endings, and they were re-releasing it like crazy in theaters. But when 28 Weeks Later came out, I went and saw it. Yep. And this movie was just so visceral and so adrenaline pumping. And the way the cinematography was and they set up certain shots that I actually prefer it to 28 Days Later. I think it's just, it's an awesome movie and it just grips you by the throat. Especially like the sequence where you know, they're in that little tunnel and they're trying to escape and the disease just starts kind of spreading through all these people where they're like, they're biting and clawing at each other and just going from person to person. And it's such a <laughs> tense scene. And uh, even the beginning of the movie is, is tense and just, you know, breathtaking because it's so intense I just think 28 Weeks Later is a masterpiece I think that movie is awesome and it surpasses the original for me I mean, do you agree with that? completely agree as a matter of fact um, I've stated that 28 Weeks Later is one of my favorite horror films ever and anytime I say that I always get corrected like oh, do you mean you must, you must mean 28 <laughs> Days Later right? Yeah. and I'm, I'm like no I actually mean 28 Weeks Later um, I think where I really got I saw this movie in the theater and it's one of the few movies that literally scared me. Yeah. Like, it was so intense. And there's this one scene between the father and the mother when the mother, you know, they, they have her in quarantine. And when the father passes on the virus to her, yes. to me that was the most visceral, uh, most emotional, and scariest scene in a horror movie I've probably seen in the last 10, 15 years. It was just insane when he turns and he literally kills his wife right there. And that's the scene that still just it stays with me. And I, I, I didn't get that from the first movie. The first movie's still great. It's groundbreaking for the way it was shot. But as far as like an emotional touch, the second movie, I think it's a little bit better. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And yeah, that, that's a great scene to bring up too. Because yeah, it's supposed to be this nice warm embrace scene and everything's all supposed to be nice and romantic and you know they're getting yeah. reunited after he pretty much left her for dead and then you know he goes to kiss her and you see that one little bead of spit between them where the camera focuses <laughs> in on and you're like no it's the kiss of death um but yeah that's, that's just a great <laughs> movie and the zombies are just scary as hell in that movie and, and just to say something about the the zombies real quick because people always say those are they're not zombies but I, I still put them in the same class but yeah I think out of all the zombie movies the scariest zombies are the ones from those movies 28 days and 28 weeks because they are literally running after you and even when you watch them change it's it's a scary uh, transition it's not like a normal zombie movie where the eyes turn yellow and then boom we got a zombie this one it's it's a frightening transition it's it's scary as hell yeah yeah i totally agree yeah you know, i've always been more partial to the the fast like rage filled zombies the visceral yeah. ones i've always thought they were scarier than the the slow ones that are just kind of lurking around so you know they're never done better than in the 28 days and 28 weeks later movies um well now that we got our honorable mentions out of the way go ahead and take us to your number five lee let's get this thing cracking okay so my number uh five might surprise you it's actually Sleepaway Camp 2. Now, have you seen the first oh, wow. Sleepaway Camp, uh, Cody? I have seen it. I'm a big fan of it. I own it, and I've watched it actually about two or three nights ago. Awesome, awesome. Well, I think you might be pleasantly surprised because uh, Sleepaway Camp 2, is a, it's a very different tone. I think they looked at the first movie, and they said, how in the hell do we top that uh, amazing twist yeah. or shocking twist at the end of the first one? <laughs> you, you don't. So I think they took what worked about the first one, and then they, they added some comedy. And Angela is an interesting character, but let's make her more of a, a, a comedy force and just make her more of a, um, a horror icon, you know, like mm. kick her up a notch. Because she, she wasn't really a horror icon in the first one, whereas this one, she is 
so fun. Pamela Springsteen plays her, and I don't think Pamela Springsteen played anything else after that, to be honest. But she's so uh, bubbly, she's so funny. After she kills somebody, she just has a blast with it. So it's a ride, and when you're watching Sleepaway Camp 2, you're, just, you're really just having a good time. Uh, mm -hmm. And Sleepaway Camp 3 was actually filmed back-to-back -back with it, but the funny thing is Sleepaway Camp 3 is not nearly as good as the second one. That's so, interesting. Yeah, that's, that's definitely my, uh, my number five. Well, you sold me on it. I've always heard off things about it, but I mean, if it's just like Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, and especially since we agree about 28 weeks later, I'm sold. I'm going to check it out because I, I love the first yeah. one. Uh, and one thing about the second one that always sticks with me, and I remember, and this is one of those things that I miss about like having blockbusters and everything around, is I remember as a kid walking through the horror section, just looking at all the horror covers and all these VHS tapes, and the cover for Sleepaway Camp 2 always stuck with me because she's got a backpack and she's got all the weapons and masks <laughs> of all the different horror icons that I know and love, so that's the one thing that always, I was like, I, I should check that movie out ever since I was a kid, but I never have, but now I definitely will, so that's awesome. Yeah, and I would definitely urge you to get the uh, Scream Factory release of all mm -hmm. three. Uh, it's it's such a great uh, release because they have brand new documentaries for all three movies, mm -hmm. and it's really interesting to watch actually all those documentaries. But and the slip covers are just glorious on, on those releases. So get them before they go out of print. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I buy up Scream Factories as soon as I can see them because I, I just okay. like you. Yeah, I love the slip um, covers, and they put a lot of effort into those movies uh, for movies that people would assume would be forgotten. And you yeah. just it, it warms your heart to know that there's people out there that love them as much as you, and they're going to put that much detail into bringing it to to new generations. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to be doing a uh, a Scream Factory special uh, the first week of May, so uh, look for that on my channel. Yeah, people, look out for that. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, so I'll have to check that one out. Well, um, my number five is Final Destination 2. Nice. Now, Good Final one. Destination, when it first came out, was one of those movies where me and my dad looked at it, and we were like, we're definitely checking that out. And we were blown away at how awesome that first one was. It took itself really seriously, but it pulled it off well. Now, what Final Destination 2 did... And it goes back to what you were saying about sequels doing something different. Is that the producer or the writers and the director said, you know what? There's some opportunities for some black comedy here, yeah. and they executed that perfectly. And I almost like two better than one because the kills are almost like punchlines in this movie. Oh yeah, they're like great. you're you're waiting for, it and there's all this tension, and you don't know how it's going to happen. And then when it finally does, you're laughing your ass off because like you've went through this little ride. It's it's just like a collection of rides throughout 90 minutes, um, and it's. Just, I don't know. I love everything about that movie. The gore is out of this world. Um, and the opening scene to date is still one of the coolest openings to oh, a yeah. horror movie. That's actually and, what I was going to talk about. Th yeah. That opening scene still to this day is one of the coolest scenes because everybody can relate to being behind that log truck. And still to this day, when I get behind a log truck, I think Me about too. Final Destination 2. And <laughs> Me also too. the scene is done very well. It's still to this day, it holds up. It's really graphic. And mm -hmm. I think it does everything that you would want to. Uh, a scene like that to do you know if you're gonna have logs one of those log trucks in the scene you know let's let's make it pay off and just completely be bloody and chaotic and crazy and that's what it is yeah and they've yet to top that opening in the franchise um, so yeah oh, I, I absolutely I absolutely love that movie and you totally stole my words every time I'm behind one of those damn log trucks I'm like I gotta get around <laughs> this guy <laughs> not happening to me so not yeah today. exactly that's awesome well take us to number four my man you got it Number four is, and this is a great one, I love this one, Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Yeah. But, but not really the final chapter, but yeah. <laughs> part four is so freaking good. Uh, one reason is because Joseph Zito directed it. And mm -hmm. Joseph Zito really has kind of a dark edge to his directing, and he's a very capable director. He knows what to do. He knows how to scare the audience. He knows where to put the camera. Um, but also, part four has some of the coolest characters in it i mean you had crispin glover how can you ever forget crispin glover and that crazy dance that he does uh, <laughs> you have ted white as to me he's my favorite jason ted white is scary as hell mm -hmm. and uh part four is the scariest friday i think it, and and then you had Corey feldman at the end uh taking out jason uh and it's just one of the most satisfying uh third acts out of all the franchise i think so really, I, I mean, when I did my reviews on all the Friday movies, uh, I think I gave my highest rating to Part 4. It's just, mm. it's a perfect horror movie. 
Yeah, no, I agree with you. I'm not the biggest Friday the 13th fan. Uh, I actually watched most of the movies for the first time, like, just a couple of months ago. Um, right. And 2, 4, and 6 were the ones that I liked the most. And yeah. 4 and 6 are often competing for my favorite one. So, yeah, for everything that you said, um, it is the scariest Friday. And Jason definitely looks awesome in that one. I think that's when they kind of nailed the, the pre-zombie Jason look is in yeah. number 4. Um, and yeah, the Corey Feldman twist at the end. I mean, it, had that been the actual final chapter, it would have been one hell of a final chapter. But oh, as, yeah. as we know, there was about six final chapters in that franchise. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so I didn't it, mention Tom Savini, the, the freaking head sliding down the machete scene. Yeah. It's one of the most iconic kills ever. Uh, Tom yeah. Savini's the man. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, that's a great one. Well, uh, my number four is another movie that, just like 28 Weeks Later, I think gets hated on way, way, way too much, and it's an absolute shame. And that's Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Hell um, yeah. Well, now, I just saw this movie for the first time last October. I was I bought the Halloween box wow. set, and until last October, I had not seen half of the Halloween franchise. And when I got to 3, I was like, okay, this is the one that everybody always says avoid at all costs. This is the one that everybody says should not be a part of this franchise, should not exist. And I loved the hell out of that movie. And I was kicking myself in the ass at the end of it for not watching it when I was young because I would have watched that every single Halloween just alongside John Carpenter's original because it was awesome. Like, it's just a creepy oh, story. It's, it's It plays on the holiday about, you know, the kids just getting on your nerves and, you know, they have the silver, silver shamrock having this plot to just murder all the Halloween trick-or-treat kids. Um, Tom, um, Tom Atkins is great, as always. Um, oh, yeah, you got Tom Atkins some of the most gruesome kills in the franchise like that one scene whenever the girl's face splits open like a hot dog um, from that mask that <laughs> malfunctions um, the people you know people hate the song but I love it for some reason like I when it, and whenever I think about the movie I kind of want to start singing happy happy Halloween <laughs> yes, <it's but>, <laughs> yeah. the, the, th the thing about that song is you will not get it out of your head never um, but uh, I saw I remember I saw part three back when it first came out and originally, I did not like it, mm -hmm. but now it's grown to be one of my favorite Halloween movies because I was able to separate the fact that Myers isn't in it. It's got arguably one of the greatest horror scores I've ever heard, yes. it, which is a big thing to say given that the, one of the earlier movies has the Halloween theme. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I think that's one of the most underrated scores ever. And then you had this, this guy that his only motive was he wanted to kill every child on the planet. Mm -hmm. That's completely insane, and I love the hell out of it. Uh, and then you had the great Stacy Nelkin too. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I just love Stacy Nelkin. So yeah, and it's it's a shame because I swear if if we could go back in time and just get them to title this movie simply Season of the Witch, yep. I think this would be a horror classic, and there would have been so much love for this movie. It would be insane. But yeah, like you said, I, I think it was just it was a real big mistake by dimension to try to kind of market this as a michael myers film because i think they even said in the trailer or the poster don't yeah. quote me on it but they, they made it seem like it was going to be a michael myers movie and i think people were just so distracted and so pissed that michael myers was in it that they couldn't enjoy what it was and it, it's a total shame because yeah it's, i love that movie yeah complete well, shame um it, just to correct you it is actually universal they did part two and part universal three. you're right okay, yeah yeah universal but uh yeah halloween three is fantastic i still watch it every year just like you do so. yeah exactly it's it's definitely going to be a staple for every halloween awesome well take us to number three lee what you got okay uh it's funny you say that because my number three is actually 28 weeks later um <laughs> i know we talked about it earlier but i love the hell out of 28 weeks later uh it's just so aggressive it's 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 crazy i don't want to you know i don't want to uh complete i don't want to repeat myself but yeah 28 weeks later one of my favorite uh, horror movies ever. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree, and that, that that's awesome that it's number three because I'm like I'm like the only or you're like the only person I've ever talked to that loves Twenty Eight Weeks Later like I do. I so know, I'm glad right? I'm glad I'm not the only one. There must be more of us. We need to gather them. Yeah, we need to we need to start like a uh, support, support group. group. Twenty Eight Weeks Later <laughs> <Yeah>. lovers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get Twenty Eight Months Later made. Definitely. I totally agree with everything you said about Twenty Eight Weeks Later. Absolute classic. Uh, my number three is a movie that you already mentioned, Bride of Chucky. Now, Bride of Chucky was the first Chucky movie I had the pleasure of being able to see in the theaters. I think I was like in third grade when that movie came out. Um, and 
I always loved Chucky. Like whenever I grew up, it was all about Freddy and Chucky. They were my two favorites. I watched them constantly. I mean, my 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 VHS tapes were wore the hell out by the time I was like <laughs> seven or eight. Um, and when Bride of Chucky came out, it was exciting for me because it's this new Chucky movie. And until then, you know, we didn't really get too many nightmare sequels or anything. So it was like, oh my god, he's back. And I remember the funny story because me and my dad got to the theater really early. And we walked into the theater thinking maybe the previous showing was wrapping up and we walked in and it was the scene whenever she's getting the cookies out of the oven and you have that strange creepy music going on. Yeah. And we were like, oh God, this movie looks like it's gonna be weird. And then we sat through it and I think my dad would agree, it's my favorite of the whole franchise. Like I, I absolutely love Bride of Chucky. It does exactly what you said about blending comedy, but it does it perfectly. It doesn't overstay the comedy. It doesn't force it like Seed did. It doesn't go in too weird of a direction. It's got some really awesome kills. Chucky's got some of his best one-liners in the movie, and I love the whole look of Chucky in this movie. Whenever she stitches them back oh, together, yeah, I, I often think that that's probably my favorite look for Chucky, and I wish I had the Funko Pop with the stitches on it. I got the one without it, so. Um, but, I'm actually looking at the Funko Pop right now. It's right there. It's got the stitches on it. But oh, well, send it to me. Be a friend. Yeah, but <laughs> I'll, I'll have to do that. Yeah. Um, one thing I, I'm, I'm very <laughs> envious of you that you actually seen uh, any of Chucky movies in the theater because I had only seen the first one before I started reviewing them recently, mm -hmm. and um, I I really regret not going, not seeing these movies. You know, when they first came out, because mm -hmm. if there's any horror icon that's like fun and would be perfect on the big screen it's it's chucky yeah and it's a shame that cult of chucky's not going to be on the big screen because i would be there in oh no so. so would i i'd be there opening night with bells on and it's funny because like my, my theater experience with bride of chucky was amazing but then i also had to sit through the theater experience of seed so i kind of have that in my <laughs> back in my memory too but uh but yeah, ever, do it? <laughs> i don't I, I got a funny story about that i'll have to tell you but uh, bride of <laughs> chucky i just i absolutely love that movie if i'm ever in a chucky mood and i just want to watch one of them Nine times out of ten, I'm putting in that one. The tenth time, I'm putting in Child's Play too. But I love Bride yeah. of Chucky, absolutely. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. Awesome. Cool. You ready for my number two? I am ready. All right. Uh, my number two is Psycho Two. Love Psycho Two. Have you seen Psycho Two? This is part of my Drums Dumbs watches list because I've never seen it for the same reasons as the other ones. Everybody says avoid it, so I'm gonna I'm I'm getting a whole new list of things to watch from doing this video. I love it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not alone in this one too, because I think a lot of people will say that Psycho Two is one of the greatest uh, horror sequels mm -hmm. uh, ever. Because uh, one, it takes place twenty years, over twenty years after the first Psycho, and that's scary. You know, you it could fail. It could be a horrible movie to take place that that much you know, in that much time after, but. Mm -hmm. Um, Tom Holland had such a great story. I believe Tom Holland directed it. I'll have to check after. But um, Norman Bates, he's one of the most interesting characters ever. And no matter what time frame you put him in, he's going to be interesting. And he is in this movie. There's uh, you have this this new uh, what's what her name? I can't remember her name. Hold on, I messed that up. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Okay, what makes Psycho 2 so great, though, is that it picks up 20 years later, but you're still digging really deep into Norman Bates' psyche. He, and what's interesting about this one is he's actually trying to be good. He's, tr he's fighting his demons. He doesn't want Mother to come out. And without giving any spoilers away, he does a damn good job of, you know, trying to remain sane. But there's, there's this uh, coup that's going on behind the scenes, and they're trying to bring Mother out. And I thought that was a, a cool aspect to bring to it. And it's got one of the, the coolest uh, endings, which I'm not going to give away, but the ending of this movie, it's, it, it's hilarious, uh, but it's also freaky. And if you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. But yes, yeah, definitely check out Psycho 2 if you have it. Uh, you'll, you'll love it, Cody. Well, I am sold. Uh, everything that you just described sounds like I need to watch that. And... Um, I've, I've seen the original Psycho. I mean, it, it's hard to go back and watch black and white movies sometimes, but Psycho is yeah. iconic. Psycho is classic. Um, and I think definitely, without even seeing the movie, somebody just attempting to make a Psycho sequel, especially that many years later, has some serious, some serious balls. Um, but and Just uh, to sell you just a little bit more, I saw Psycho 2 before I saw the first one. I, oh, like wow. you, I, saw the, I saw the first one way late in life. 
But mm -hmm. the uh, Psycho 2 and 3 I saw before, and I loved them immediately. Awesome. No, well, I love Blake, uh, Bates Motel. It's one of my favorite shows on TV, oh, so yeah. I'm, I'm fascinated Fantastic. with the character of Norman Bates, so I'd, I'd love to check it out. So I'll definitely, that's going to be added to my Amazon uh, list here in about, <laughs> about 20 minutes. So that's awesome. Um, I'll definitely check that one out. Well, my number two, and I already know you haven't seen this movie, so this is my opportunity to sell you on a movie, is awesome. Fan Phantasm 2. Oh, no. I absolutely love the Phantasm franchise. The The later sequels kind of have some pros and some cons to them. I mean, Ravager, the most recent one, is all con. But the first two are some of my favorite horror movies of all time. Now, where the first one was really creepy and subtle and was more about tone and eeriness, the second one, and again, going back to your... A perfect thing that you said in the intro that we keep having uh, brought back throughout these lists is a sequel kind of taking respect to the original but taking it in a new direction. Yeah. Two says, you know what? Let's not hide the tall man. Let's not put him in the background. Let's not focus so much on tone. Let's just put it all in your face. And the second right. one, where the first one is basically in this one town and these two brothers are trying to figure out what the hell's going on in this mortuary and what's going on with like the tall man and the people are dying around them and their bodies are going missing. The second one is basically a road hunt movie. It's where the characters return from the first one after the one main character has been in an insane asylum for from the events of the first one. And they get out and they're hunting the tall man. They're going through all these cities that he has wiped out and robbed everybody and robbed all the bodies. And they just ramp everything up to 11 in this movie. They ramp the tall man up to 11. They ramp the gore. They ramp the humor up. Uh, the little um, flying spheres that are the famous images from these movies and they're on all the covers. They add all these cool things to them, like little saw blades and all these different elements to them in the sequel. And one of the coolest things to me, that one of the main characters, Reggie Bannister, uh, he creates this double shotgun. Where he takes two oh, shotguns and he straps them together and that's kind of his weapon for the rest of the franchise. And it's one of the coolest weapons in horror movie history. And it all started in Phantasm 2. So Phantasm 2 is one of those sequels where I often debate whether or not it's better than the first one. Like if I was to stack them right next to each other, you couldn't fit a razor blade between them because they're so close <laughs> and they're so awesome. So um, I know you haven't seen the Phantasm 1 or Phantasm 2. You should absolutely check them out. Phantasm 2 is yeah, one of my favorite the horror sequels ever. the one franchise that I am the most shocked that I've never seen because of mm -hmm. the love that I hear uh, mm -hmm. fans have for it. And it's interesting that you said that the second one, he's more in your face. Uh, when you said that, it kind of reminded me of what they did with Child's Play 2. Mm -hmm. You know, Chucky wa wasn't as full on in the first one, but in the second one, they said, you know what, hey, everybody loves Chucky, let's just give you Chucky on steroids, and that's what the second one was. So you've definitely sold me on uh, the Phantasm 2. Uh, I definitely want to see the first one, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll look forward to the second one as well. Yeah, well, the first one just got a 4K remaster somewhat on a, a Blu-ray, and it's an awesome Blu-ray. And the second one is on a Scream, Fa uh, Scream Factory release, so they're easy to get a hold of, so definitely check those out. Will do. <coughs> All right, Lee, you're number one. You ready for this? This is it. I'm Number ready. Number one, uh, my favorite horror sequel of all time is Halloween 4. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's, there's a lot of personal reasons for this. Uh, I saw this opening night, uh, October 21st, I believe, 1988. And it's the movie that just really made me obsessed with this franchise. Before mm -hmm. that, I was just a casual Halloween fan. Michael Myers is cool and all that. But I didn't really know too much about Michael Myers, to be honest. I was, I was, like I said, I was 15, and this movie came out, um, I believe, seven, eight years after Halloween 2. So this is a long time since you'd seen Myers. Mm -hmm. And they went back to basics in this one. It was scary as hell. They didn't make fun of the character at all. Michael Myers in Halloween 4 is arguably the scariest he's ever been. Mm -hmm. And then to, ta then to throw in that ending at the end... Uh, again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but the ending of Halloween 4 um, probably scared me more than any other horror movie ever in my life. I literally had nightmares about that ending, probably <laughs> because I just didn't expect it. it like, it, it just kind of hit me over the head, and I, I, I had chill bumps. It was crazy. And so to this day, Halloween 4 is one of my favorite sequels. I probably watch it maybe more than the original. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's my number one, Halloween 4. Love it. 
Yeah, I like Halloween 4. I actually saw it for the first time this past October, right after I watched uh, Halloween Season of the Witch. Um, I wouldn't put it as my favorite of the franchise, but I think that's part, but a lot of your love for it, like you say, when you describe seeing it in the theaters when you were young and everything, that yeah. always makes a movie just stay in your heart when you see stuff like that. So that's yeah, awesome. And the crowd, I just remember the crowd that night mm -hmm. was so into it. Like everybody mm -hmm. was. This was the return of an icon, and everybody was just—they were on board. Everybody was like, "Wow, this is awesome! He's—he's he's amazing! He's—he's he's scaring the crap out of this little girl." Mm -hmm. Daniel Harris was amazing in it. Yeah, but when I was uh, sitting in the theater watching this, it wasn't just me. It was also the the crowd. There was a collective gasp uh, when everybody saw that last scene, and also Donald Pleasance's performance. I think that's what really sold that last scene too. Is not just what you saw, but also. Donald's performance and his reaction it just mm -hmm. everybody was just so into it so it was just another cool thing to you know like you were a part of something yeah and it's such a shame that that ending didn't get capitalized on in Halloween 5 that's one of the reasons why cool. when I when I did my Halloween ranking I actually put five below resurrection I know I'm probably one out of maybe five people <laughs> in in the world that did that but um yeah that was a it's really not that far above it yeah, that was a really good <laughs> ending because just like you said it's unexpected because you don't necessarily think of Without spoiling the ending, you don't necessarily think of the epitome of Michael Myers being something that could leave Michael Myers or move around. So that was a really cool, interesting yeah. twist there. Um, I really, the scene that always is memorable for me in that movie is the rooftop chase, whenever he's starting to chase them on the roof and everything. Definitely. Because it, you think about being up that high and you're already vulnerable because you're getting chased by Michael Myers, but then you have also like the fear of heights and you could slip at any moment, all this crazy stuff. So that was a really tense scene that I remember. And yeah, that, that's, um, that's one of the the last times that I really loved seeing Donald Pleasant's character. I thought he got overused a little bit in the later sequels, but he was really good in four. Yeah. So yeah, that's awesome. Absolutely. And just well, to give you a little bit of behind the scenes on that rooftop uh, mm -hmm. scene, they were originally going to set the house on fire, but, uh, I guess time constraints and budgeting didn't let them do that. But can you imagine if the house would have been on fire and then you got Myers chasing you? Oh, good lord! Uh, That's like a nightmare. So <laughs> like, can anything else bad happen? Go, just go ahead and kill me. Yeah, exactly. I just, I just give up. This is just not fair. Yeah. <laughs> well, my number one, and I know it's a movie that you appreciate very much, mm -hmm. is Nightmare on Elm Street Three: Dream Warriors. Hell this, yeah! I was actually going to put that on my list, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to save that one for Cody. I know he's going to have it on there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This this movie, to me, it often competes, just like Phantasm 2, as the best of the franchise with the original. I think I watched one and three, like, at least once a week when I was growing up. Everything about this movie is awesome. Like, I love the kills. This, just like Bride of Chucky, is when they added humor to Freddy, and this is the one and only time where they absolutely nailed it. They nailed. got the perfect mix of Scary Freddy and Funny Freddy, um, you know, you got the initial idea and story ideas from Wes Craven, which you can definitely tell his hands are on this. And then you got Frank Darabont coming in and adding some things, which is awesome. And his stamp is definitely on here a little bit. Um, I love all the nightmare, or the, all the nightmare, all the Elm Street kids in this one. <laughs> this is one of the few nightmare movies where I love every single one of the kids. They all have their own unique personalities and. Even though I want to see how crazy the kills are, I actually want to see them live because I like all of them, especially like Patricia Arquette. And then you got Kincaid, and he's just an awesome character because he's basically, he's reached the point where he's accepted that no adults are going to help him. And he's like, okay, fuck all of you. I'm just going to help myself. And I love that about him. And yeah, and Joey is an awesome character too because he kind of encompasses all of us whenever we were young men because his entire weakness is women and it's absolutely hilarious because it doesn't matter what situation he's in he just gets drawn away as soon as he sees a hot woman um and i, I can't talk about this movie without talking about docking too i mean docking the soundtrack <laughs> yeah. the song dream warriors um just i could go on and on and on and on for hours about how much i love this movie it's the perfect sequel to me because it pays so much respect to the first one by bringing back characters of the first one, utilizing them perfectly, wrapping up their stories beautifully, and it takes the franchise in a new direction, which unfortunately they screwed up later on, but it was yeah. going in an amazing direction by the end of Dream Warriors. Yeah, you pretty much, man, I tell you, you hit all the high points. I mean, you summed it up. Mm -hmm. um, I've always uh, likened... Uh, Part three to like Terminator Two and Aliens. Yes, that's how great uh, Dream Warriors is. It's it's probably the one that I watch the most. It's just Me too. such a fun watch. Freddie has some of the coolest lines in it without getting too campy. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the welcome to prime time bitch. Oh, know? I like that. <laughs> but, um, I love that one. Yeah, yeah. Dream Warriors is I, I have Dream Warriors on my iPhone right now. It never leaves. Me too. It's one of my favorite. You know, and, and I don't even like consider it like glam rock. It's just such a timeless song. It is. Uh, there's so many great things about uh, Dream Warriors. I saw it opening night in the theater. It was freaking amazing. I, I love Dream Warriors. So I, I applaud you. That is a, that is a great pick. Yeah. An excellent pick. I, I really, when you're talking about Envy and Me for Chucky, I totally envy you for being able to see that in the theater for the first time because like, that's, yeah. that's just a movie where if they played like a throwback screening somewhere, I would be there in a second. Um, yeah, just, I love everything I'll say, about I'll that. I'll say Freddie owned that crowd that night, man. Everybody was eating Freddie up. He was this this mm-hmm. made Freddie pretty much an icon. You know, one and two, he was big, but mm-hmm. when when Freddie came out in three, that's when you started seeing the Halloween costumes, uh, advertising everywhere. I mean, Freddie, everybody loved him. He was amazing. Everybody loved a child molester, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> even though they never say he is. But it's, yeah. it's great. Yeah, exactly. That's the power of Freddie. Yeah, that's when he took over the world, and that's why four made you know the most money out of all of them because everybody was just psyched yeah, after four seeing three. Owes everything to three, really. Yeah, it does. It's not half the movie that three is. Oh God, no! And I'll get into that in my review very shortly. So, <laughs> I'm looking yeah. So, to Nightmare on Elm Street three. I mean, I'll say it one more time: is one of my favorite horror movies of all time, and it just it often competes with the first one. So I absolutely love it. And um, awesome list. I mean, all of your movies that you listed that I've seen. Perfectly understand why they're your number um, number five through ones, and the ones that I haven't seen, I'm definitely going to see within the next week or so because you sold the hell out of me by your descriptions of it. So awesome list. Likewise, man, I'm looking forward to Phantasm. I've been, I've been dying to see that one anyway, so you just gave me that push I needed. Yeah, man, got to check it out. Well, that is our top five horror sequels, people. Put your top five down in the comment section below, and please go over to Lee's channel over at Drum Dums and check out his channel. Lee, tell us about your channel one more time. Yeah, um, like I said, you can uh, type in Drum Dums in your search search box. I'll pop right up. But uh, come on over. I have tons of franchise reviews. Um, I don't review all horror, but I'd, I'd say most of my stuff is horror. And I also like to do like catalog titles, horror classics. As a matter of fact, uh, I just got this TV because I'm going to actually be doing a review of Spider University. Um, and I'm going to be doing the VHS. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Look forward to that. And uh, Cody, thank you so much for having me on your channel, man. I've been wanting to get on your channel for a long time. Big fan of the stuff that you do. You can tell that you're one of the, the big YouTubers that's going to rise uh, really fast. I appreciate it, man. And I, I have the same appreciation for your channel. I'm glad we got to do this collab. I've been looking forward to it very much ever since I, I brought it up to First you. First of many, my friend. First of many. Yes, absolutely. And also, <laughs> to also plug one of Lee's videos, actually just recently, pretty funny, the same day that I asked him about this video, he released a video with his daughter talking about his top five horror movies of all time. So as a nice yeah. precursor to this video, after you get done with this one, go check out that one and you get even more Drum Dumbs goodness. So. Go over there, check out his channel, hit the subscribe button over there. If it's your first time checking out this channel, please like and subscribe and share this video. And if you want to check out a few more of our videos, you can check out a few more by clicking right over here.